Hi everybody, it's Dr. Dan Papari, and I want to show you today how we can use Excel to figure out the relationship between concentration and absorbance that we read in the spectrophotometer. So this data file is just already posted on Canvas. Um, it's under using Excel to calibrate the spectrophotometer. And so if you remember, we set up the concentration gradient by uh, diluting in the 96 well plate, and then we measured the absorbance in the spectrophotometer, and these are the results I got for this particular um, case. So the first thing we're going to have to do is that we expect that at zero concentration, we should have zero absorbance. We definitely want that relationship to pass through zero, zero. And so you can see we are measuring a small amount of absorbance, and that's really from the water. And so we could subtract that out from all the other, um, all the other points. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and insert a column by right-clicking on the column and say Insert. Um, and that way I can have my two columns I want to plot right next to each other. To subtract this out then, all we have to do is write an equation. We can say this is going to equal our C11 cell, which is the current measurement, minus um, the absorbance from just the water. And we don't want to change what we're subtracting off. We want to subtract off that 0.44 from all. And so I can just copy those up and you'll see it subtracts 0.044 from all the measurements. Okay, and now I can go ahead and plot using insert, chart, and the chart we really want to use is a scatter chart, and we just want to use the, the dots, right? We don't want to draw a line in between the dots because we just want to see how the dots lay out. So I'll do that. And so what we can see is that we do have an expected linear trend, but then it gets, looks like it ends up being a little bit nonlinear. So we're going to have to do something about that because Really, we're looking for just the linear region of this where we can draw the relationship. And so you remember the concentration here is on the x-axis um, because that's our independent variable that we set up, and then our absorbance is on the y-axis. Okay, so like I said, we're probably not going to be able to use all these points. So if I don't want to use this point and I've already selected the chart, I can just go ahead and right-click and set, hit Select Data. Okay, and it says what points do you want to use? And so it's saying from A2 to B11. So I can just start from A3 to B11. Hit OK. And it'll redraw my graph with, without that last point. And now what I can do, if I click the data and I right click, I can say add a trend line. OK, and so it draws a linear trend line that approximately fits the points. I do want to do a couple things here. Number one, again, we want to make sure it passes through zero, zero. So I'm going to say set the y-intercept to zero. It would be nice to know the equation and also the coefficient of determination on the chart. So we can put this up here. And we can see that we have the relationship between concentration and absorbance is absorbance equals 11.782 times the concentration. That's pretty good. Uh, very high coefficient of determination. But, you know, I'm, I'm also starting to notice that this 0.33 data point may also kind of pull the line down a little bit. And it's not that big a deal, um, but I'm going to go ahead and right-click, select data, and I'll leave out that 0.33 point by choosing A4 to be 11. So it'll start at 0.25, and it's pretty nice. Excel just fixes everything for us. You can see it changed our equation for our trend line. You can see now it fits these points a little better than it did before. The coefficient of determination is higher. OK, so this is probably a more accurate linear um, comparison between concentration and absorbance, where we have absorbance equals 12.665 times the concentration. And now, really, the, all that's left here is we want to make this chart look better. And so what we can do is we can do add chart elements. We can add axis title, titles. Okay, and so the axis title here, this is concentration in millimolar. This is absorbance. You know, there's not really units on absorbance. Sometimes it's called absorbance units, but I'm just going to leave that off. Um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and put the equation down here. The other thing, you can change the chart, chart title. I'm just going to go ahead and delete it for now. Um, you know, just showing you what you might do to make this look better. These fonts are awful small. If you're going to copy this into your lab report, you're going to want to increase the font size on all these. You can just right click, change the font, you know, change the font size to something more reasonable. Okay, same with the numbers. 
Um, I'm not gonna really show you how to do all these, but you can you can go ahead and, and change the font sizes so things are much more readable on all these things. Um, but that's about it. That's how you would find the relationship between concentration and absorbance.